Hi, I'm Daniel, and the next 10 minutes or so, I will talk about application load testing with K6. I'm a GNU and Linux enthusiast. I'm a part-time lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences, Upper Austria. And during my day job, I'm an expert developer at Eurofunk with a strong focus on application performance. Eurofunk is a solution provider for emergency centers and command and control centers with its headquarters in St. Johann and further office locations in Hagenberg and in Salzburg. Eurofunk employs more than 500 employees from more than 23 nations and our customers are is the public sector, so police, fire brigades and ambulances, the industry and bigger airports. Eurofunk is a solution provider for command centers. This means that in a command center or an emergency center, everything is provided by Eurofunk. Everything you see in this picture is provided by Eurofunk, starting from the desks to the network cables, to the video walls, to the computers, and of course, the software. So when you call the emergency hotline 112, the dispatcher will pick up and you can talk to him or her and she will enter your information in our system, which is the Eurofunk Operation Center Suite. It's a large scale web application which can handle a multitude of data, has a streamlined UI for incident management, so your emergency is handled quickly. It can be used to dispatch units to incident locations, and once the units are dispatched, you can see real time information about the location in a map and also their status of the units and the status of the incidents. Directly in EOX, the Operation Center Suite, you have voice communication directly in your, in your browser via WebRTC. So clicking the Take Call button will connect you to your dispatcher. And once the units are dispatched, the dispatchers can use also the browser to communicate with radio devices that the units have in the fields. And also external event sources can be easily integrated into EOX. So we have integrators for alarm systems, fire detectors, smoke detectors, CCTV and video surveillance, and also external web services, which provide additional information for incidents. And EOX is mission critically. So it's important that it has high availability, low latency, the response times are consistent, and the information is always up to date. If you ask a dispatcher, they will tell you in an emergency situation, every single second counts. And that's why we need to test our performance. And we do that with the tool K6, which is an open source load testing tool. It's HEPL licensed. And K6 was acquired by Grafana Labs this summer. It's built with Go. And you write the tests with JavaScript. There is some support for the newer JavaScript features, and there's more support coming. But at the moment, it's limited to uh, the ES 5.1 version. Although there is module support, which makes writing a test a lot easier. When you write a test, it follows usually the same structure. So you have setup method and teardown method, which sets up data, deletes data from your system, or it just handles login and log out of users. You have a summary, which you can customize, which will be generated at the end of the test. And most importantly, you have a default function. The default function is called by virtual users of the testing framework. And each virtual user executes the default function in a loop and performs HTTP requests or gRPC requests and whatever you like to implement. K6 is a command line tool. So you start the test with K6 run on the command line and you then get an interactive view of the test while it's running. It will show logs and will show failed iterations or the remaining duration. Inside of a test, you will usually want to apply checks to the requests that you make. So you can apply arbitrary rules to any object in your test. Usually those are HTTP responses. So you might want to check is the HTTP status code 200 okay, or 
is the content type JSON. Does it contain an ID that matches a specific pattern or not? And these checks will automatically be rendered into the final summary, where you get green check marks if all checks succeeded, but also red crosses if at least one of the checks failed. And if you have failed checks, you will get the percentage of failed checks versus the succeeded checks, and also the number, the absolute number of failed checks and succeeded checks. You can also define custom metrics. You have four types of metrics. You have counters, gauges, rates, and trends, which can be used for different use cases. So you might just be interested in how many calls do I have? Or you might be interested how many failures do I have compared to how many successes of one specific thing that's not automatically captured by K6. Or you might be interested in a trend of a time series. What is my maximum response time? What is my average response time? And those trends, uh, sorry, those metrics are automatically rendered in the summary again. They are rendered differently depending on the type of the metric. For a counter, it's just the number with the per second rate of the test. For the trends, it's the average, the minimum, percentiles, the median, maximum response time. You can configure this. For a gauge, it's simply the latest or the last known value. And once you have those metrics, you usually want to apply thresholds. Thresholds work on a global level for your complete test. So you can say, I want to fail my test if the average response time is above 100 milliseconds. Or I want to fail my test if a rate drops below 5% of something. And the thresholds are again rendered in the summary where you get red crosses for failed thresholds or exceeded thresholds and green check marks if the threshold was within the defined limits. That's not enough. You can also use groups and tags to categorize request checks and metrics, or you can also use them to split recorded metrics. So you might be interested in the response times of one specific endpoint of your application. And you can then define thresholds for this subset of the metric. The tags can be applied per check or global, globally for the full test. And here you see uh, a test summary of several metrics and thresholds. Most of them are automatically defined and captured and recorded by K6. So you get the number of checks that you have performed. You get the data that you have received from the web service. You get the data that you have sent to your web application. You get the average duration per group. You get the response time distribution, so how many requests have I performed, what was the average duration, what was the median duration, and so on. We can also see uh, custom metrics at the bottom of this screen where we have the SOC frames and the stomp commands received, where you can also see the number and then uh, a breakdown what this means in a per second rate for your test. Furthermore, you can define different workload models depending on your application needs. So there are two different models. You have the open workload model and the closed workload model, where for the open workload, you control the arrival rate of new users. And for the closed workload model, you control the number of current users that are interacting with your system. And in K6, you define this with scenarios. So you say, I want to have a scenario that's using 16 users who perform the default function in a loop. Or you can say, I want to have 100 requests per second on my application. And K6 will automatically start up new virtual users to meet your required load. And you're not only limited to a single uh, base load or a, a static load, you can also define ramps. So you can say, in the first minute, I start with zero users, and then after one minute, I want to have 50 users. And then for two minutes, stay at 50 users, and then in, again, increase it to 100 users over one minute. And you can do the same for the arrival rate. 
start with zero requests per second, then at the end of one minute, you're at 50 requests per second, and then stay at 50 requests per second for two minutes, and then again, ramp it up. You can also ramp it down, of course. And if you visualize this, you see for the ramping VUs, so virtual users, the number of users is matching what you have defined for the ramping arrival rate. The users are automatically injected by K6. And you can also see it in the request duration. So in the bottom part of the screenshots that the number of requests, this is the green background area, matches the defined request rate. You're not limited to HTTP. So our application uses WebSockets. You could also do gRPC request with K6, where you can connect to secure and plain WebSocket endpoints and then send WebSocket messages, or you can, might also receive messages, of course, and react on those. So you might want to generate an HTTP request, or you can uh, record the duration that it takes for a WebSocket request to be made or for the response to be received. There's one caveat, though, that we noticed when implementing this. The, the cookie support is kind of broken. Uh, they're currently working on it. There is a workaround available, so you can also use cookies with WebSockets. And of course, our application is mission critical, so we want to test the performance daily, nightly, or even hourly. So we run this test in a GitLab CI pipeline with a Docker image that's executing a predefined test on an hourly basis, for example. We have defined thresholds for our application, so the pipeline fails if there is a performance regression, and then we can react. You get immediately notified by email if your pipeline fails, so that's an added benefit. And to analyze your performance tests in detail, you can also define uh, outputs in K6, or you can use outputs with K6, which you can then integrate with, with Grafana. So there's InfluxDB, a time series database, where your test simply writes all the metrics it's capturing while it's running into this database. And with Grafana, you can create panels, which will then visualize this data. And you can view live as the test is happening, how many users are there, what are the response times? Are there any errors, unexpected errors? Or is there a slowdown over the duration of the test? Or is there a slowdown in relation to the number of users? And with that, we can guarantee that our application runs smoothly, has low latency, consistent response times. If you're interested to learn more, visit our website, contact us via social media, and also read up on K6, on InfluxDB, and on Grafana. Thank you very much.